Come on, William. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked forsake his way. That goes for you too, Elder Williams. <laughs> Forsake his way. And the unrighteous and man. the unrighteous man. His thoughts. Listen, all of us have thoughts that we should not have. Amen. There's not a person in here, including me. <clears throat> I don't do like other preachers, try to put myself above the word. I'm in that word just like you. That's right. And all of us got thoughts that we got to get rid of. Oh, yeah. And because we don't want God to catch us or cut us off with the way sometimes we think. That's right. Because sometimes meeting some people make you want to do something to them. Amen. And Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. There's sometimes, brother, people want, they make you want to do something. Amen. I mean, this is after you spoke in tongues. After. <laughs> after you spoke in tongues and yeah. after you shout. I want to paint a realistic picture of this holy way of God. Oh, yeah. If you walk around and think serving God is walking around grinning and smiling like you in the Cub Scouts or Girl Scouts <laughs> or right. Wee Blows, you's a fool. That's a fool. You see these blind infidels out there on the street giving you literature. You a Christian today? You a Christian today? You a Christian? They don't even know who Jesus is. That's true. Man, when you make it up in your mind to walk with God, a life of self-denial is a life of pain. Oh, yeah. And every time you get in mind to walk with God, the devil have a way of bringing people in your life yeah. that you try to get away from. That's right. Some of these people you haven't seen in 5, 10, 15 years. That's why I tell all followers of the truth of God, this <coughs> Facebook stuff is some of the most dangerous thing under the sun. That's true. I don't know how it works. I don't have Facebook. Many people have been pulling on me to get Facebook, and I tell them, here's my face, and William's got my book, and that's all I need. I just don't have the time and patience to sit on some computer all day and just chat to a bunch of infidels. And then all of a sudden, the one who you prayed for God to get rid of out of your life, 10 years later, how it works? Somebody pop up a friend, and you don't know who it is? Friend request, and you don't know who it is, right? Until you log them. And there she is. You're like, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Up jumped the devil. Amen. Many things would not come in your life until you make it up in your mind to serve God. That's right. So when these preachers like T.D. Snakes and Creflo <laughs> O'Penny and Benny Hinn and others tell you Satan don't have no power, you done lost your mind. That's a lie. If he didn't have no power, how could he cause war in heaven? That's right. And a whole third of the angels took sides with Satan yeah. and backslid and joined him to have war in heaven. That's right. Satan got plenty of power. Oh, yeah. I heard one preacher say to the people, God, Satan don't have no power unless you believe it. Listen, if your house on fire, you ain't got to believe it's burning. That's right. If your house is on fire, you want to stay there and don't believe it's burning like a fool, go ahead. Go ahead. Won't be for long when you're done coughing and gagging, you will run out of there and admit the house is burning. That's right. The devil got plenty of power. Don't you feel him? Oh, yes. Don't he bother you? Oh, yeah. The part of the human body that Satan bothered the most is not your flesh. Yeah. He bothered the mind, mind because the flesh take a break and rest. But sometimes Satan dive into your subconscious mind even when you sleep. And yeah. next thing you know, you commit adultery in your sleep. In your sleep. Yeah. You meet a man you ain't never met in your life. You met a woman or women. That's right. That's right. You ain't never met in your life. That's right. Young sister trying to abstain. All of a sudden, she meets someone. She think he's a Greek goddess. <laughs> Come to her in a dream. Hair just blowing. <laughs> and she commit fornication. Well, Pastor Dennis, when I have dreams like this, do am I supposed to sin? What do they do to me? The book of Jude. In Jude 1 and at verse 8. Jude chapter 1 and Follow verse 8. Follow me in your Bible. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I got Bible for everything. everything. I just got to give it to you. Right. Some folk, I remember one woman came to me after service. She said, I mean no disrespect, <laughs> but you got a hard preacher. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, you was, Williams was reading so many scriptures, and I followed him in the Bible, and every scripture was hitting me. I just closed my Bible up and threw it down. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but why did you do that? She said, she shook at me, she put her hands on her hip. She said, honey, I was <laughs> scared that I was going to see some more of myself in there. <laughs> 
Remember what we said earlier, the scriptures is a mirror. Yeah. And you must accept what you see about yourself. Self-honesty, be brutally honest right. with yourself. That's right. You must call a spade a spade even when it hurts your character and hurts yourself. That's right. Listen. Jude chapter 1 and at verse 8. Let's get our dreams. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Amen. Read on. Despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet filthy, my, filthy, dreamers. filthy dreamers. They do what? Defile the flesh. Defile. That's why if you ever have a, is that quiet again? <laughs> if you ever have a filthy, dirty dream. You ever had a dream, somebody woke you up, and you got angry with them? You know, because they cut that dream off too short. And you're like, what you waking me up for? And you literally laid down to try to pick your dream back up like a movie. <laughs> huh? You laid back down and try to start that thing over, turn you hate the sun came up, you put the colors over your head, squinching your eyes. And all the time, could have been fornicating, committing adultery, or doing the things in your dream that you're not doing now, like smoking, smoking weed, gambling, snorting cocaine. Even though it's a dream, if the book said the wages of sin is death, a dream is dangerous because you can be lowered into the actual physical act That's right. through the dream. That's right. So sometimes a dream is an invitation to do what you've never done or to go back and do what God brought you out from or to hold on to what you're trying to let go and presently struggling with. That's right. Are you listening? Likewise also these filthy dreamers. Defile the flesh. When the thing is defiled, that means it's in sin. That's right. That's right. Man, you can have such a bad beef with someone, you dream you killed them. Wow. <laughs> How many can bear witness to that? <laughs> Amen. There are some people, man. I mean, you don't have such a run in with them, and you're like, you know what, Lord, 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 I'm not, I'm not going there. And the book says a dream comes through the multitude of business. business. So as a result of having this run-in with him or her, you went to bed angry, and man, you had a dream that you wore, either drove by their house and threw a bomb or went up to them, bow, 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 and you laughing. <laughs> 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 you <know? laughs> like, like you done lost your mind. <laughs> but as a, <laughs> as a result, result, your flesh is what? Defiled, Defiled. because when you are defiled mentally, it calls your flesh to sin even subconsciously. Like you can dream you with a woman, and then you wake up and spilt seed in your bed. That's right. Filthy dreamers. What? Filthy dreamers. What? Filthy dreamers. Good dreamers. Filthy dreamers. No, good dreamers. Filthy dreamers. No, good time dreamers. Filthy dreamers. Good time dreamers. Filthy dreamers. What does it do to you? Defile the flesh. When the thing is defiled, it's in sin. In sin. Are we learning today? Back to the fourth chapter of 1 Timothy. Back in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1. Yes. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. You know the Spirit brings this. Oh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't care what you dream. I wouldn't care if your <laughs> dream right. was Mr. Potato Head. That's what would right. I care? That's right. But, brother, the defilement of any form mm. is sin. Yeah. It is written, all unrighteousness is what? Sin. sin. This is why one must pray and fast. I often teach this. Many of us have a tendency of praying for God to make us stronger. Now, in most cases, when many people ask God to make them stronger, they're just talking about either physical strength or spiritual strength. Let us remember, there are several dynamics of the human being. Mind, soul, body, spirit. So when you pray and ask God for strength, a strong body but a weak mind don't help you none. No. That's why the Bible said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. That's right. So when you pray and ask God for strength, you're going to be strong, one, mentally. Two, emotionally. It's important that a man and a woman is emotionally strong, sound, stable. That way your heart is not every place and you're attracted to everybody. That's right. And you won't accept the proposal of everything. Yeah. And you won't be in love with 30 women. Amen. 
And you won't fall in love with eight men. That's right. Because you have emotional stability. That's right. So you pray for strength and stability mentally, emotionally. Because when the mind is stable and the heart is stable, it will stabilize your temple, which is your body. Yeah. And you want your spirit to be stable. That way you don't run after everything that sounds like truth, but it is not truth. That's right. For Solomon said, there is a way that seem right unto man in the end thereof all the ways of death. Amen. Listen. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. In the last days. That in the latter days some... That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. This are the, these are the last days now, and yeah. people are leaving God by the thousands. Mm -hmm. And what's causing them to do it, William? Giving heed to seducing spirits. Somebody tricked you. Someone seduced you. Mm -hmm. and Brother, you got so close to that woman, so that woman pulled you out the church. <clears throat> That's right. She hugged you too tight. That's right. She jumped on you too often. Yeah. She gave you too much of her body. That's right. Until she came in and shouted right out the church and pulled you right, right out with it. Amen. You remember the old cartoon you used to watch when someone cooking and a smell is in the air and mm -hmm. they float in the air? Yeah. That's exactly the way some women done some brothers. And that's exactly the way some brothers done some sisters. That's right. Some sisters was doing good until you met him. Yeah. Some brothers was doing good until you met her. That's right. Jezebel now pulled you out. That's right. And Absalom came along and pulled you out. Pulled you out. Listen. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That what? That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed what? Giving heed to seducing spirits. A seducing spirit. Here is someone in the truth, but yet got a seducing spirit will try to pull you to the side, away from the church, to debunk the truth. That's right. And tell you, man, you ain't got to believe that. You ain't got to believe this. And when you're weak and mentally and emotionally unstable, mm -hmm. you start getting under the wing of a beginner. Right. Getting under the wing of an amateur That's right. who don't even know God. That's right. And then they manipulate you and con you and trick right. you and pull you right out of the faith. And then you end up going to hell with him or with her. Right. Let us understand something. Nobody is worth going to hell for or with. No. And I mean nobody. Nobody. Listen. Giving heed to seducing spirits. And what? And doctrines of devils. Give me Acts 2.42, Acts and then we want to alternate. Mm -hmm. I want you to pay attention to the language of the scripture that he read, doctrine of, of devils. devils. All right, give me another doctrine. Acts chapter, 2 and verse 40, Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Come on. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. The apostles' doctrine is the teaching of Jesus. Right. The apostles' doctrine is the teaching of Jesus. That's right. So you have the apostles' doctrine. And, and doctrines of devils. And you got the devil's doctrine. That's now right. the devil's doctrine clashed with the apostles' doctrine, but being that Satan is a serpent, he borrowed from some of the apostles' doctrine and blended with the devil's doctrine, and now he manipulated and mixed it up so good you can't tell the devil's doctrine from the apostles' doctrine. Right. To make a better example, if somebody wants to destroy you, they can make a good salad and then put some type of poison or, 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 or rat droppings in you think it's little plump peppers. That's right. And dilute the poison with the sweetness of the salad. That's right. That's the way false prophets do. They dwindle down the lie and camouflage it by reading scripture. And when you lack the understanding of the scripture, you can't see the lie that's hiding. That's right. That's why I thank God for the truth of God. Amen. When they put that lie, then try to put scripture on it, we get the crowbar of the Bible. No, you don't. We Put it under that line, work it up, work it up, and then they keep trying to press it down, but then we rip all the bolts out of it. That's right. That's right. Let truth rule. Yeah. I don't want to lie about nothing. Amen. 